It is a truth universally acknowledged that once a good story ends, people will usually want more. People have been telling stories they like and retelling them and transforming them into new things since the dawn of time. Transformative work is just a thing that people do. That's why it shouldn't be any surprise that Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice has a ton of transformative works about it. So, for the next 15 or so minutes, I'm going to talk to you about Pride and Prejudice and all of the fanfiction that's been created for it. First, we're going to talk about visual adaptations. Second, we're going to talk about published book adaptations. And third, we're going to talk about the people who love Pride and Prejudice and all of the cool things that they've made for it. There are basically two kinds of visual adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. There are the straight up movie kind, where they take Pride and Prejudice and they turn it into a movie. The first of these was in 1938. The second kind is where they take the idea of Pride and Prejudice and turn it into a movie. These usually feature a strong-willed independent female and an attractive aloof guy who hate each other and then through crazy zany romantic comedy antics they fall in love. Um, if you're talking about Twilight, which according to Stephanie Meyer is based on Pride and Prejudice, you should replace strong-willed woman with Bella Swan, avatar of Stephanie Meyer, and you should replace crazy zany romantic comedy antics with vampires. So movies, which you may have seen, that are, in part, based on Pride and Prejudice, are these. There are also, so far as I can tell, two musical adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. There is First Impressions, which was apparently really bad, um, and you can get the soundtrack on, like, Amazon or something, but it's really bad. Uh, and there's I Love You Because. I Love You Because is interesting because it's a musical, and it takes the roles of Darcy and Elizabeth and swaps them. Which is weird because it basically just swaps their names. There are also, of course, a number of straight up plays of Jane Austen's work, which you can go look for on your own because they're not very interesting to me. Now we're to my favorite part! Two published book adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. These have been going on forever. Jane Austen herself used to tell her family members bits and pieces about what happened afterward. Um, some of the things were like Kitty Bennett gets married to a colonel nearby and stuff like that. And yeah, so Jane Austen wrote her own fan fiction, kind of. It's not really fan fiction because she's the one who wrote it originally, but you know, same idea. You're probably familiar with Pride and Prejudice and Zombies if you've been in a bookstore in the past three years, but it is nowhere near the first Pride and Prejudice adaptation transformative work. The first Jane Austen transformative fan work ever published was probably a novel called Old Friends and New Fancies, an imaginary sequel to the novels of Jane Austen. It's apparently a sequel to all of Jane Austen's books, except it primarily focuses on Pride and Prejudice. So, as you can see, People have been writing this stuff forever. There are people who make their entire livings writing Pride and Prejudice fan fiction, and I want to be one of them. Published transformative work of Jane Austen falls into two categories. The sequel and the pastiche. Sequels are basically the same as in movies. You take the book and you write what happens afterward. Pastiche, on the other hand, is you take the book and you turn it into something new, but you keep the basic elements of it. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies falls under this category. I really want to talk about pastiche because there's all kinds of crazy novels that Austenites have written. There are several versions of ones where Mr. Darcy is a detective and you know it, it's weird you guys like <laughs> people just really love this stuff and you might think that Pride and Prejudice and Zombies was the first of these it's really not. Like, there are so many crazy people who just write these things. And if you ever want to take a trip down into crazy land, go look them up. There's a whole page on Wikipedia about works of based on Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. 
There's a really interesting one that came out recently in 2010. It's called Pride Slash Prejudice. I don't know how I feel about it as an adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. Like, it's sort of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies-like, where it expands upon the original text. But it introduces the element of bisexuality. Like, everyone's a bisexual. And I'm just kind of sitting there going, if you're going to do that, I feel like it has to be a modern adaptation rather than a piece set in that time period because that really wouldn't have worked. Uh, just just saying. If you're into modern adaptations, there's an adaptation called Prom and Prejudice, which sounds awful. And at the same time, I really want to get it because it just sounds so stupid. Basically, they took Twilight and they made the Pride and Prejudice shit overt and they took out all of the vampires. <laughs> There's also this weird little subcategory of pastiche where you take a character that was in the background of the novel and you write a whole book about him. There's a whole bunch of books about like Georgiana Darcy and Charlotte Lucas and Anne de Borg and yeah. If, if you like any of those characters, go search their name on Google. Something will come up. It's really interesting. Publishing transformative works of Jane Austen is a big deal. There are lists of it on Amazon, there are websites dedicated to this stuff, and there's websites where you can buy just Jane Austen fan fiction. Like, here, I'll link. <laughs> the internet is a thing now, though. So, if you want, you can go online and read Jane Austen fan fiction written by people who love Jane Austen as much as you do. Pride and Prejudice, there are modern adaptations, there are gender swapped adaptations, there are adaptations for other shows like Buffy or, you know. Jane Austen fanfiction has been around since the internet started. You guys, like, there has always been Jane Austen fanfiction on the internet. It's one of those things. The problem, of course, is finding this stuff. Luckily, if you search Jane Austen fanfiction in Google, a whole bunch of pages come up. If you've never delved into fanish culture, fanfiction is great. If you ever wanted to know what happened at the end of a novel, or if you ever wanted to know what would happen if people's genders were swapped, or if you ever ha wanted to know what would happen if you introduced them into the modern world, or if you ever wanted to know what characters in another series would look like if they were put into the world of Pride and Prejudice, fan fiction is excellent. Like, there are Pride and Prejudice adaptations in almost every fandom for almost every pairing you can think imaginable, and fan culture is great. But, um, it's crazy. Really, delve into it sometime. I had so much fun looking this stuff up, and I can't fit all of it into here, and it makes me sad. In conclusion, the creativity of people is limitless, and there is a whole world of adaptations of Pride and Prejudice that I have barely touched on, and I want to keep talking to you about forever, but then you'd have to watch my face forever, and I feel like that would be strenuous on our relationship. So, thank you for watching. If you're interested in transformative works of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, I've included some links in the down bar. Um, you can leave a comment below. We can talk about Twilight, or You've Got Mail, or Bridget Jones Diary, or Pride and Prejudice, or Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, or your favorite fanfic of a show that's based on Pride and Prejudice, or anything really. Um, if you're in my class, this obviously doesn't apply to you because you're watching this on a screen. But uh, yeah, thank you all.